Okay, so today we're looking at a very basic kind of setup of any Super 8 camera. Now, I know that a lot of you will already know how to do this, and for the people who have had like Super 8 cameras for like, you know, the past 10, 20 years, it probably isn't going to apply to you, but I do get a lot of new customers who would just come into the format and uh, just don't have a clue how to use Super 8 cameras because everything these days is kind of point and shoot. You know, the focus sets automatically, the uh, exposure sets automatically. So it's understandable how like a, a kind of focus ring might flummox some people. So this video is to kind of um, help those people. Now this is a camera I've had coming today. I've not tested it. I bet you I haven't even got any batteries. Oh, I've got some batteries. Uh, yeah, I've not tested it um at all so i hope it works but it's basically just going to go over a very easy kind of generic setup so you know if you come to pretty much any super 8 camera you will be able to just run through this it's kind of a checklist because i get so many cameras in um i just quickly kind of run through like kind of a setup and it's it's very simple to do but you'll get the idea so i'll take the batteries out good job it had some batteries in come with the batteries I would have had to run to the house and uh, get some batteries and start again but yes yeah, so to begin with you get your camera I always set the eyepiece before doing anything before inserting batteries and to set the eyepiece to your eyesight um, and it's very very simple what you want to do is you want to look through the lens and you want to make that's the point actually some um, some like um viewfinders have a light block so this one has a light block and basically what that does is it shuts off the viewfinder so no light can get in when you're filming uh, to kind of ruin your films so make sure that's open and um, what you want to do is you want to zoom in full telephoto at the sky or um, a wall or kind of a plain object and uh, then you want to set your lens to infinity and as the infinity symbol lines up to the index mark and then you want to turn this diopter ring and uh, what this diopter ring does it sets the viewfinder to your eyesight and i generally just kind of crank it over one way and then it's more than likely it's going to be really really fuzzy when you look through I should explain as well. While you're looking through the camera, you can see um, a kind of a sp it's, it's a split image kind of screen. And when you're setting the eyepiece, um, you want to make that very very sharp. So it's a circle with a line through it. And um, so after you've completely turned the the ring one way, you want to make that circle and that line as clear as crystal clear as possible so it's sharp and yeah i'm turning this completely it's completely gone the other way i don't know if that means my eyesight's really bad but there you go so now that's set to my eye so that's the first thing i always do uh second thing i usually shoot um i usually shoot with 100d which is kodak's reversal color film um, it's a modern daylight stock and what I do is I set the camera oh it was already set on bulb but I always set it to tungsten and uh, this might seem a little bit backwards but trust me it's not um, basically this is daylight stock it's balanced the temperature is balanced for outdoor filming now back in like the 60s 70s 80s film was mostly tungsten balanced so um, what that means is when you set this to when you were filming outside with old film stock and you set this to the sun symbol um, a filter pops across the front of the lens and um, kind of the temp it makes the temperature the color tone of the uh, the image right for shooting tungsten balanced film outdoors now because this is already tungsten uh, this is already daylight balanced um, basically you don't need that filter so by clicking it over to the the tungsten the bulb you basically disable that filter now most cameras will automatically disable the filter anyway because 
this kind of pushes against a little notch in here and it just disables the filter but some cameras don't have that so i tend to always just click to the bulb symbol okay so when that's clicked to the bulb symbol i uh then i then i put some batteries in so this appears to just if i can find the other battery this appears just need two aa 1.5 volt batteries um, so you just slide your batteries in and I don't put my film in yet, I close it down and um, I basically make sure the batteries are alright so I have no idea if these batteries are okay because they're not even mine but usually there's a battery check and you can find a battery check somewhere so straight away you can see battery check on the camera sometimes it comes in the form of a red button um, and there are usually two ways you can check kind of if your battery is working and one is so I'm going to slide it to battery check and it springs back on this camera but um, I hold it down and be, and I look through the viewfinder and a little green light appears in this camera sometimes it's a little red light but usually when a light appears it means you've got enough battery so that's good on other cameras you'll also have um, a battery check which is kind of a, a meter and you press a little red or blue button and a little kind of, I don't know what you call it, just a little kind of dial finger thing, kind of flicks onto some on a scale, and it tells you exactly how much power you've got left in your battery. And use generally red is bad, blue is good, and there's kind of an in-between part, but try and keep it in the blue. So now you now your battery's fine. What you can do is turn it on, and then you want to make sure that your camera is this has only got a run um, but you want to make sure it's shooting at 18 frames a second because most film cameras uh, film projectors sorry kind of um, play film at 18 frames a second so set it to 18 frames a second um, very important uh, if you're kind of just beginning with this set your exposure to auto now you can see here there's a manual and an auto make sure it's set to auto um, you know, it's usually fairly easy to find that switch on your camera. Um, it's usually kind of indexed or marked by a little red dot if it doesn't actually say auto or it'll be the opposite from manual. So you should be able to figure it out for yourselves. And uh, the, then, yeah, you're pretty much all set and you just want to make sure the motor runs. I haven't tested this, so I hope the motor runs. So, yeah, that sounds, that sounds actually really smooth. Um, so when you know the motor runs, uh, you can basically check the zoom, uh, you can check the manual zoom, and it's very smooth, and you, know, you can zoom telephoto or wide, uh, and a lot of cameras, these cameras, you'll find that the electric zoom doesn't work unless you're pressing down the film trigger, so press down the film trigger and you'll see that it's zooming now, zooming in and zooming out. So with a lot of these little electric cameras you do have to be holding the film trigger down to work the zoom and yeah I mean that seems really quite good. So after I know everything works I get my film cartridge. I usually use a Kodak 100D and then I just pop it in. Now when you're popping it in you want to make sure the film playing or the film plate fits up snugly against the gate so you kind of usually put it in at this angle and then it'll just clip in and you know that's not going anywhere that's fine shut the cartridge door yeah that's completely light tight you can see what films in here and uh, then you have to focus your image compose your image and focus your image now when you're focusing um, what I do or what I think you kind of generally do with any kind of camera is you zoom into your subject uh, telephoto so you zoom right into your subject and I'm zooming right into the camera here and then you use that split image screen so the um, the circle with a line through it to focus your image now what you want to do is make sure it lines up so you'll have a portion of the image at the top and a portion of the image in the semicircle in the bottom and it lines in the middle 
So this is your line. And say we're focusing on a straight edge, a lamppost or a door frame. You basically want to make sure the door frame kind of aligns, then you're in focus, um, and then you zoom out. So then you zoom out and compose your picture. And then when you're filming, generally it's very good to have one hand on the lens, one hand on the trigger, elbows tight to your body, looking through the viewfinder. You've composed your image. It's also good to have one foot in front of the other as well to stabilize yourself. So you've got one, two, and I usually put the camera right on my face. So it's kind of three points of contact and it makes the shot very steady. And then you're good to go. You can hear that, hear that running. Um, and one last thing, footage counter. This footage counter will let you know how much film um, has gone through the camera. So this has 50 foot of film and usually this footage counter tells you um, a reading in either meters or feet, usually it's feet or both. And um, when you put the film cartridge in, this will begin to kind of tick down so you can keep an eye on it. But if you have a jam, your cartridge jams or something, and you have to remove the cartridge, just bear in mind that this, this will reset then. So keep an eye on how much film you've got left. Um, but generally you can tell when your films come to an end, it'll change pitch. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can always, just to check, just to double check if you're not sure, you can always whack this cartridge out at any time because the only film that's exposed is like six frames over the pressure plate and it will say if you come to the end of your film you will literally you know come to the end you can pull that out and you'll see an exposed uh, kind of writing on on the uh on the film so yeah that is as far as i know i've covered everything